All right, peace. That's how we do it. Yes. Everyone is good tonight. Peace and love. Let me send out this one last invitation to the brother. Almost forgot him. Before we get into our topic of tonight, again, we have to give up our respect and reverence to the Lord. So we're going to bow our eyes, bow our hearts, more importantly. If you're driving, be mindful, pay attention to the road, of course. But again, bow our hearts, bow our mind. If you can, bow your head and your eyes, too, and respect to the Lord's prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, it only can be through the belief in, in the reception, in the belief in a profession of your son, Yeshua, Jesus, the risen Christ, the Messiah, one who has lived, died, and resurrected for our sins so we can also experience rebirth. Father God, I pray that that spirit that was inside of your son that resurrected him is alive right now. I pray that based on your word says we're two or more gathered in your name, not just in your name, in belief in that name, you are a miss. So I pray that you are a miss, that you are dwelling amongst us, that you are within, that every Everything spoken, everything heard can be correlated and tied directly to the alignment of the wisdom from heaven. I pray that I can decrease so you can increase. I pray that the breath of life, that Ruah HaKodesh is breathed upon me, the eternal breath of the Holy Spirit. I pray that my, my sinful nature is, is pushed to the side. I pray that the weaknesses of my heart, that the abandonment of my flesh is not recognized at this moment. I pray that over the brothers and sisters for the ears and the vessels that are heard, that they're not connected to any point outside of the spirit. I pray that we are trans sinning, that we are being transformed by the words of God. I pray that this session will be another lovely watering over the seas that are planted. I pray that the Holy Spirit will breathe upon one of the brothers and sisters tonight that will awaken them more to who you are in truth, and that we will worship you in spirit and in truth. So, Father God, I ask that you go before us. I pray that you already laid this out, that this predestined session has already came out to the, be delivered in the way that you wanted to. I pray not to add to your word or take away, but just to be articulative and expressive in the anointing that you are giving me for this moment. I thank you for daily grace, daily bread, and daily mercy. And I pray for your favor in this session. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen, Zaza. No, I ain't call you. I ain't call you. I ain't call you. You want to hear the word? Let me get, let me get, my, let me get my Horace Grant on. We're going to get into the word. We got the Bible popping. You already know how it goes. Um, one, before we even get into word, I do want to say uh, peace and love to the brothers and sisters who viewed the channel, um, the ministry work. Um, I'm, I'm humbled just to be able to deliver the word and to receive any correctiveness in the spirit or any uh, encouragement in the spirit or any acknowledgement in the spirit, anything that we can add on to as a community. But I do want to acknowledge the brothers and sisters who check out the channel later on, uh, Rebirth and Visions, and even for you that are able to go back if you need to digest something. I mean, you know how I already speak. I start getting in my little tangents and start going, spirit start going crazy, this and that, but I'm giving you Bible. I pray that nothing that I have is takes away from the Bible because that's all I have to offer just a, a, a being, a willingness in the Bible. And I pray that I can learn in my walk with you to grow stronger and, and not just hearing the precepts, not just hearing the principles, not just hearing the promises, not just understanding the purposes, but really in being enveloped. And not that I'm not already, but I want to be more. I pray that you want to be more, that this is just more. This is just a stepping stone to more. We have more to give up, more to receive. Amen. We have to become more. You have a calling. You have something upon you. I know you're hurting right now. I know you lost right now. I know you may be high on a high horse right now. I know things may be going good on the mountain. I know things may be in the valleys, but I'm trying to tell you nothing is nothing without the Lord. I pray that our ministry will develop together, that we will build a solid community to those around, especially in days like this. I'm not a political person because the one that I, 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 I adhere to, the one that I, I, I adhere to, the one that I, I bow to, I am a citizen of heaven. That is the most high God. I pay attention to the authorities. I pay attention to all that other stuff, but that's not my ceiling. That is not who I go to for my day. That is not who I go to for my governance. I will respect the laws of the land, but the laws of the spirit is which we are seeking for. So let's get into the word. Amen. Test trials and temptations. 
We all know a little bit about that, right? I believe so. Let me get the technological device out here. You know how we got to rock with that for the ease and effectiveness, right? Let me, get, let me get my tea over here, too. All right, sir. Test trials and temptations. I hope we get some clarification on these. Although we got to, I have the uh, uh, the scripture subtopic breakdown. Like, let's just identify some stuff. All things that occur to us, occur around us, things that we like, things that we don't like, all things are have to be acknowledged um, first in respect to the most high God, El Shaddai. He, 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 all things. But just like a big boss, just like a top dog, you have subordinates, you have people with roles, you have people with designated responsibility, you've authorized, you've allocated, you've assigned some things, and that should fit the word. Everybody inside of the word was fit with a placement. All of us that are living to seek the word is fit with a placement. So when we look at these test trials and temptations, we got to understand all things may come from God, but God also has delegated some things to. Let's get right into it. Test. Understanding God's test. The Father in heaven, the Most High God, is the originator, the, 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 the orchestrator, the administrator of the test. His word tells us we're going to get into it. I'm not, it's too much Bible to get into it. We got to get a stopping point. You know how we do, because we'll float right into 10 o'clock. We haven't hit it yet, but we can float if you, if you want to go there. All tests. But like all tests, they are tests for different reasonings. A lot of the tests, spiritual tests that we pay attention to, uh, 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 well, we're not going to get, I don't want to jump ahead of myself right now. So let's just pay attention to the origin of the test, the understanding of God's test. Let's get into the word. We start with Psalms chapter seven, verse nine. Psalms chapter seven, verse nine. Bring to an end the violence of the wicked and make the righteous secure. You, the righteous God who probes minds and hearts. You, the righteous God who probes minds and hearts. Where is most of the test aimed for? Our tests in the spirit are aimed for where? The heart. The Lord is the tester of the mind and the heart. The heart is the, the spiritual heartbeat, not the, not the blood work. I'm talking about the spirit heart. Out of the heart comes so many things. Guard your heart. But he is the tester of the heart. See, he hears. He hears the talk. But so does men. I'm not going to get too far from what we got going, but understand that Yeshua, when he was speaking in the New Testament, he, he was speaking, uh, some of his disciples got to eat and start to busting down some vittles, right? And, and, and the Pharisees always looked for a reason to get on them. They were like, yo, why your people, they wash their hands? Because they, you know, they started going to the law. The law told them it had to be clean. Everything had to be clean. You know, why your disciples, they wash their hands for the eat? Now that's unclean. They touched it, and he said, "Man, it's not. It's not. It's not what you put in your body that's a, uh, that that makes you unclean. It's what comes out of your heart. That's the new way. What comes out of your heart? What's inside of our heart is what it is. So the Lord God tests our heart. Do you ever feel like that on a daily basis? That that inside conviction. Well, I'm always going to give it the Spirit his 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 due." So we ain't talking about no no eat no conscience. We ain't talking about no awakening. We are talking about the spirit of God. Do you when He's speaking to you and you get that that push when you get that thing and and, and you don't did something or get ready to do something before you get the numbing it before you get the rejecting it but you heard it you felt it that's that heart He's testing that heart. Proverbs seventeen verse three. Proverbs The crucible for silver and the furnace for gold. But the Lord tests the heart. 
the crucible for silver and the furnace for gold because those were testers. When you put the silver in the crucible, that tested. When you put the gold in the furnace, that tests because we ain't get there yet. Proverbs chapter 27, verses 19 through 21. As water reflects the face, so one's life reflects the heart. Death and destruction are never satisfied and neither are human eyes. The crucible for silver and the furnace for gold, but people are tested by their praise. Oh, we threw a little twist on it, but people are tested by their praise. What did we do when we started off? Before we got the praying, sometimes we get the praising, because sometimes we just be praying and petition without praising. The people will be tested by their praise. So don't knock me for that extra five minutes when we come on and it's jumping. And forgive me if you miss it. That's how sometimes I used to catch a little Addy, and I'm still getting a little Addy. Um, 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 well, she's not on here yet, but she is, I'm gonna tell you anyway. But you know what I mean? With Erica, you know, what I mean? that's my lady. When I started my walk and going to the service, right? You know what I mean? Because we don't just do this, we go to the house of the Lord. I hate one, I like to, I'm on time anyway, you know what I mean? So I like to very integral. I like to be prompt, you know what I mean? I like to be on site. But I love praise and worship. So when we start, I hate when somebody's behind. I hate being late for somebody else. And then that, you know what I mean? The Lord will be testing my heart because my impatience be showing. Although I want to get to him, right? This is what he showed me. Although I want to get to him because I want to praise and worship. More importantly, sometimes how you treat people. And I don't always treat people good when somebody is agonizing my walk with the Lord. If you come between my walk, I may be a little, little, little dysentery, but the Lord called me to be right with you, called me to be at peace with you. So he be testing my heart and not not only do we show my my ego, my pride, what I want to do, just because I got a justifiable reason, I want to praise you. He said, but why are you going to be mad at them? Before you try to praise, you got to love. Oh, my goodness. We're going to get into that. But he tests the heart. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 15 through 21. It's that guy Solomon. King Solomon got a little older back in, and you got to understand the difference in, in, in when you get into the word with, with, with King Solomon. In Proverbs, he was young and youthful, blessed by the Lord, coming up, doing his thing, blessed and wise. In Ecclesiastes, he's a little older, still, still a little wise, but he starts to understand that life is a little different because he lost his intimacy with the Most High God and pursuit of all other things. But the Lord tested his heart, and that's where he got to where he's at. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 15 through 21. Whatever it is has already been, and what will be has been before, and God will call the past to account. And I saw something else under the sun. In the place of judgment, wickedness was there. In the place of justice, wickedness was there. I said to myself, God will bring into judgment both the righteous and the wicked. For there will be a time for every activity, a time to judge every deed. I also said to myself, as for humans, God tests them so that they may see that they are like the animals. Ooh, let's, let's, let's stay there for one second. I also said to myself, this is when that time when you just sitting dolo, and that's when Solomon was at that time. He he just sit there and just sometimes, you know, walk out the window, don't need no one around him, just contemplating life's trajectory, life's journey, and, and wishing you have can go back with hindsight. And he's just paying attention. And he says, I also said to myself, as for humans, God tests them so that they may see that they are like the animals. Surely the fate of human beings is like that of the animals. The same fate awaits them both. As one dies, so does the other. All have the same breath. Humans have no advantage over animals. Everything is meaningless. This is one of his favorite. <laughs> Everything is meaningless. You know, that's where his heart was at. 
All go to the same place. All come from dust and to dust all return. Who knows if the human spirit rises upward and if the spirit of the animal goes down into the earth? If you get something out of that scripture, always remember the Lord is the tester of the heart. So even in our talks, how we are feeling is what he is searching. How we are thinking is what he is searching. Sometimes we are showing a, a it can be us, believers, people in church, wherever. Sometime on the outside, we showing a lamb, but acting like a wolf on the inside, thinking nobody don't see it. Sometimes we not really, we don't kill somebody two or three times in one day and then, and then be looking at somebody else for actually doing it once. But listen, he, he looks at it all. Jeremiah, prophet Jeremiah, chapter 11, verses 18 through 20. The people were plotting against the prophet Jeremiah. At that time, I'll just give you some con uh, uh, context and background. Um, whenever you, and even now, but back then more heavily, speaking and speaking for, that's what the prophet was speaking for, you know, basically speaking for God. You're using your voice to speak for God. He has placed something, told you to do something, and people didn't like that back then, and they still don't like that, right? So, most people speaking for God are always going to have somebody plotting against them and looking for ways against them. And that is in our churches. And it's for good reason sometimes. And he called these false prophets or hypocritical people. Glory to God. Why I share with you brothers and sisters to always have the light of God to shine, not just on the work of the spirit, but also the, the denial of my flesh, the attacks of my flesh. I don't, I don't like to dwell in it, but I promise you that I don't need no one else to shine a light on my transparency with you. That's why I'm walking with you. I'm not ahead of you. I'm searching for the most high. I'm searching for the feet of Jesus. I'm just doing his work on the way of keeping up with him. I pray to come to you in the truth on the Bible. Not to be presented as anything that I'm not. Let's get back to the word. Because the Lord revealed their plot to me, I knew it. For at that time, he showed me what they were doing. At that time, he showed me what they were doing. I had been like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. I did not realize that they had plotted against me saying, let us destroy the tree in its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living that his name be remembered no more. But you, Lord Almighty, who judge righteously and test the heart and mind, let me see your vengeance on him. For to you I have committed my cause. Understand the, the power of that. So the prophet, when you're walking with God, you don't know what your enemies are plotting, but your God does. Because he tests everyone's minds in their heart. And when you're with him, he'll reveal to you some things to keep you in protection. And sometimes even if he don't reveal you, he goes before you to have you protected. That's why we go to Psalms 91, that those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High God, you're going to find refuge. You got to understand, if we didn't have these promises to believe in, Boy, we be out. We How many people come from got PTSD? How many people are walking in a state of paranoia? Being a man like myself with an old walk, an old walk, you know what I mean? When I did some things that maybe I got to look over my shoulder, there's no longer. I pray to go with repentance and not defensive. I can't go backwards. I can't worry about enemies I created. All I can do is look in that brothers and sisters to make. And I repent of the things that I did. You have to understand that. This is the power of the word. This is the power of belief. We ain't just believing it to look to do. We believe in it because we're getting something back from him too. That is the protection and the provisions from the most high God. Why we seek to serve him and give it up this worldly things. But that's dope. When you're doing the work of God, he reveals the plans of your enemies. Not only just going before, he tell you what they think. And they say, boy, they, listen, let's keep it going. Let's stay with Prophet Jeremiah, though, chapter 17, verses 9 through 10. Chapter 17, verses 9 through 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? 
I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct according to what their deeds deserve. Do you understand me? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. This is the this is when sometimes people read the word and want to duck from it. This is the part of the Bible you don't want to see. This is the part of what it's either going to call you to tra uh, 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 transform, be transformed, or you're going to get right back into it. Because when you hear truth, it's only when you either gonna react or you gonna, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna reject or you're gonna accept. Staying with Jeremiah in chapter 20, verses 11 through 12. Hmm. Yeah, 11 through 12. No. Let's keep some Bible going. You like the Bible, don't you? I'll give you a little bit more, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Let me add a little bit. Verses 7. We're going to start at 7. Because this is Jeremiah's complaint. Ooh. The man walking with the Lord just understood that he... The Lord is with him, going before him, cover him. He was already talked to. He was back in Jeremiah chapter one, verses four through nine. The prophecy that was spoken over me was the same uh, spoken to him. So you can share these type of things, right? But the Lord spoke to him. He, he said, I'm going to go do, do my work. And Jeremiah said, I'm too young. He said, listen, you, know, you ain't too young. I'm going to put my word in your mouth. I'm going to put my word in your mouth and go forth and speak. I'm going to make you a prophet to the nations. That was in chapter one. So chapter 20 now, we're dealing with a complaint. Sometimes we'll be working with the Lord and he be testing us. Every time you get a test, you might get a little frustrated. Don't be the first. Don't feel like you're the first to feel frustrated by your test, even if you know it's coming from God. See, the walk with the Lord got to be a real one. We got to bring him our emotions. We got to bring him our anxiety. He knows we feel anxiety. He said, uh, 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 yeah, cast your cares on me for he care for you. When anxiety, the psalmist said, or David said, when anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. Joy. You got to be 1,000 with him. You got questions, bring it to him. Don't try to question who he is, but bring your questions to him. You got doubts, and even in your belief, the word, sometimes you got to have some more faith. You got to get another dose of increased faith so you can get over some little. And this is the journey, the walk. Don't think just because you hear it on a Wednesday, went to get it on a Sunday, that everything going to be good throughout the week. This is daily, daily bread, seeking daily grace, daily mercy, daily time, daily intimacy. This can't just be Wednesday word study. It can't be doing it. You, gonna, you only got one toe in the walk. Water. But Jeremiah had a complaint. You deceived me, Lord, and I was deceived. You overpowered me and prevailed. I am ridiculed all day long. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I cry out, proclaiming violence and destruction. So the word of the Lord has brought me insult and reproach all day long. But if I say I will not mention his word or speak any more in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. I hear many whispering terror on every side. Denounce him. Let's denounce him. All my friends are waiting for me to slip, saying perhaps he will be deceived. Then we will prevail over him and take our revenge on him. Pay attention with the prophet said when you work with the God. He said, all my friends are waiting for me to slip. Those closest to you when you walk with God, maybe not just watching your walk to give you some praise. They're watching to see if you're going to fall. But the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. This is how you get renewed. But the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. So my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will fail and be thoroughly disgraced. Their dishonor will never be forgotten. Lord Almighty, you who examined the righteous and probed the heart and mind. Let's rewind it, verse 12. Lord Almighty, you who examined the righteous and probed the heart and mind, let me see your vengeance on them. 
For to you I have committed my cause. For to you I can so you hear the other scriptures and say, uh, do not take vengeance from somebody. Vengeance is mine, say of the Lord. When you are being wrong or offended or you got something, you, 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 yo, handle that for me. Do it. May your will be done. When you are really with him. But you also got to be mindful. He's going to examine your heart and your mind as well. What is your motives? If that family just got home, you know what I mean? Let's get back to it. Another prophet, Zechariah chapter 13, verses 17, excuse me, verses 7 through 9. Zechariah chapter 13, verses 7 through 9. Awake, sword, against my shepherd, against the man who is close to me declares the Lord Almighty. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered and I will turn my hand against the little ones. Why is God talking to them like that? In the whole land, declares the Lord, two thirds will be struck down and perish, yet one third will be left in it. He was bringing his wrath upon him after he was testing. This is why he, he come, because every time when you get the test, remember you get a result. Depending on your result and what you we almost be about to get there, depending on what you're willing to do after your test. But we're not there yet. Yet one third will be left in it. This third I will put into the fire. This last third. So he don't want to get everybody. He don't want to just, after the test, he don't want to pour his wrath for everybody. So let's find out which third we're going to fall into. This third I will put into the fire. I will refine them like silver and test them like gold. They will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say they are my people and they will say the Lord is our God. So when you get tested, you will be refined like silver and test like gold. That's why you cannot get upset when you are tested. Because we're being tested, we are loved. There are some outside of us not being tested. or It's funny, right? So just pay attention. I don't know where you are in your walk. But I do kind of remember before I got intimate or started talking in conversations with God when I was in the feds in 2004, I don't really remember how my thinking was, but I was wild. Like, I don't, every day my brain was off. So I wasn't really, like, I don't understand. Like, I was trying to, like, what, was I being tested? Was God? I don't even have no conversation. Man, when he's out the box, you are just loose. It ain't really no test. You just living. It's no, you just, it's life catches up with you. He ain't really slowing down. You ain't really probing you. You ain't meditating. You ain't taking a step. You just like this. You want to hunt it. You want to hunt it. Like, and then you, one day you slow down, then your life catches back up to you and you see what you got to deal with. But when you ain't in him, you're not being tested like this. So don't be upset if there's conflict going on, because conflict means that you're fighting against something and you're not trying to be like something. Accept the test. First Thessalonians chapter two, verses one through four. You know, brothers and sisters, that our visit to you was not without results. We have previously suffered and been treated outrageously in Philippi. As you know, but with the help of our God, we dared to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition. For the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. We are not living this way. We are not trying to do this. I am not trying to do this to get your respect. I am not trying to do this to get your likes. I'm not trying to do this to build subscribers. I'm not trying to do this to, to find out if you think of me something different than you thought of me yesterday. I'm doing this 
fighting past my flesh, fighting past my own, fighting past my own and allowing him to use it because I want to please him. He has told me to follow in his footsteps. He has told me, see, I want to please him because he knows the motives of my heart. And you can't fool him. Not when you really are seeking to walk with him. That's, that's what it knows when that relationship comes past religions and it develops into the relationships when no one can tell you who God is when it's just a G-O-D. It's way more than a G-O-D when you start understanding what his attributes are, start looking to see what he really means, start to understand that hey, you can't do nothing without him. That's when your relationship blossoms. So that was understanding God's test. But what are some desired outcomes for tests? The desired outcomes for the test. It's tests are for something. When you go to school, you take tests, right? Educational testing is for something. They want to see some type of results. Or if you take a drug test, they want to see if you are, are, are got something going on in your system. When you take a spiritual test, the Lord is looking for a desired outcome of that is a heart transplant. He also wants to de develop a, 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 a trust, a relationship more of trust. And again, as you heard it, it's a refining it's a process. These tests are a refining process to get the impurities out of us, just like the crucible for silver and the furnace for gold. So the Lord tests the heart. You have to get the impurities, the toxins up out of us. Before we get to desired outcomes, check this out. Oh. If you, and I just taste this personal. So I'm, uh, I still have to, I'm still growing in areas of gentleness. I'm still growing in the areas of uh, self-control when I'm uh, like my emotional, if I'm offended in reaction, right? Um, I'm still growing in an area of um, impatience dealing with, like I would relate to you about dealing like whether it's going to service, wherever I'm at, going to work, anywhere. I, my, come back from, let's say it's my background, how my pops were, whatever it was. You know what I mean? If you know my pops, you know, you know, daddy, you know what I mean? He was on a time schedule. And I guess I'm like, I was ready for the jail system. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cause they, you, you time, I'm, boom, 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 you ain't eating past this. So I gotta be there. Maybe that's it too. So thank you for walking with me. Cause it ain't just integrity. It's also a little fear. I, I gotta be on time. So someone's impeding that driving or whatever, I have to fight to keep the spirit of me of that patience because I'm impatient. And even then I'm down here in Georgia. I did it earlier. You know what I mean? I'm trying to get home to get to the study. I, it, it, this, didn't, this one, it didn't say don't not pass, but it wasn't a broken line. I don't, you know, I had, you know, I had to hit it around. You know, I don't let people too much in front of me impeding how I can cruise. You know what I'm saying? Because if you may be doing a liminal under, I'm frustrated because I'm impatient trying to get to my destination. So the Lord will put tests in front of us to show where we're really at with something. So if you're fighting against anger or anything like that, you will be tested. Somebody will try you. Somebody going to try you. Oh, God. And then you're going to see. Uh, you, you, I thought you said you had it. He's our therapist. But the desired outcome for tests, like I said, heart transplant, uh, developing and building trust and refining. And we go to Job chapter 23, verses 8 through 12. You know the story. We're going to hear more about Job, um, especially starting in verse chapter 1, so you know who he is. If you never heard more about him, we're going to talk a little bit more. But this is Job in chapter 23. He's been through some things. Job said, but if I go to the, to the east, he is not there, talking about God. If I go to the west, I do not find him. When he is at work in the north, I do not see him. When he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. My feet have closely followed his steps. I have kept to his way without turning aside. I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. Get some understanding on that. When he first started, he said if he went to the east, the west, the north, and the south, he can't find them. 
but he followed him closely. How? Because of the word. See, when you think God out there, you can find him in the word. You can find his ways in the word. When he, you don't think he's around you, find him in the word and you stay close to what the word says. I have not departed from the commands of his lips. The word told him something. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. And now we did, that's what Job said in Matthew, in Job 23. You go to Luke chapter four, I think verse four. I know it's Matthew chapter four, verse four. It says, uh, 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 um, 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 for man cannot survive off of bread alone, but by every word from the mouth of God. They reiterating, they regurgitating something that they heard a prophet say before, something that they heard say, something that was passed down. He just giving, I'm just giving you what somebody else said. I'm giving you what somebody else. When you experience God, you can pass down the word. Psalms chapter 7, verses 10 through 11. My shield is God most high, El Shaddai, who saves the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge, a God who displays his wrath every day. My shield is the most high God. Who saves the upright in heart? You got to test the heart to know if it's upright or not. See the word of God. See the wisdom inside of the word of God. And see yourself inside of the wisdom found in the word of God. We go back to prophet Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 27 through 30. Verses 27 through 30. Hmm. <laughs> the prophet said, I have made you a tester of metal and my people the ore that you may observe and test their way. They are all hardened rebels going about to slander. They are bronze and iron. They all act corruptly. Woo! So do you, you understand? Look at the comparative. When, when God, when he's testing, he wants us to be refined and come out like silver and gold. But when you got the impurities in your nest, you like, you're hardened like bronze and iron. That's that corruption. And prophet said, he made, he made, he, he said, I'm going to make you the tester of the metals. He can, now the people are like ore. See what's inside of them. The bellows blow fiercely to burn away the lead with fire, but the refining goes on in vain. The wicked are not purged out. They are called rejected silver because the Lord has rejected them. That's the word. Ezekiel, another prophet of God. Ezekiel chapter 11, verses 19 through 21. I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Then they will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. They will be my people and I will be their God. But as for those whose hearts are devoted to their vile images and detestable idols, I will bring down on their own heads what they have done, declares the sovereign Lord. So one of the, that's the desired outcome of the test. Are we as people or are we not? Are we going and willing to go through the refining process to be uh, uh, identified as still as silver or gold? Or will he look at us as bronze and iron based on the impurities of our heart? Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Uh, let me just not try to go off the head and give it to you verbatim. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, 
to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, this is what's powerful. By the renewing of your mind, but dig it. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Why do I love that so much, oh, Father God? Because after you, are, after you are being transformed, after you're growing, after your refinement is still going. Now, don't get me wrong. We're always going to be refined. Ain't nothing wrong with getting your goal cleaned up and making sure that everything is school, good, right? But he says, after that, when you transform, you no longer conform. Form. Now we, because before he was testing everything, remember, before he was testing the hearts, before he was testing the mind, now we can test what his will is. We got a good bond with him now. We done gave ourselves over. Our heart is kind of in good standing. That doesn't mean we're going to do some fleshly things. That don't mean the things, but when you do some fleshly things, when your heart is with him, your heart hurts. Amen. That's how you know you got a heart for him. You want to turn from with a repentiveness, but you got a sorrowfulness. You got a contriteness in your spirit. That's when you know you're walking with him and your flesh has let you down. But once you have been transformed by the renewing of your mind, now we can test God's will. That is one of the desired outcome of the test we go through. Let's move on to trials and tribulations. Although I didn't say that in the in the in the title, you know, but most of the time we kind of group them together. Trials and tribulations, and understand that trials and tribulations are different than tests. Tests are have this result that it wants to bring something out of us totally different than what trials and tribulations are. It still relate together, but when the Lord tests us, He's testing our mind and our heart. Trials and tribulations, our body goes through it. Our flesh goes through it. This whole being goes through it. We go through some things that are not just feel like it's godly. We go through some things that just affects this. But you always remember everything belongs to him. That's why it sometimes just be a fight to find out him in everything. But he's there. Trust me, he is in everything. He is in every part of your trial and tribulation. You are not abandoned. Even if you're walking with him today, you're not abandoned because we go through something today or tomorrow. I We have to fight. I, I We got to fight. But we also got to not just fight. We have to understand what this is about. So trials and tribulations, sometimes we can understand them. They are earth struggles, right? But they also come with heaven's judgment. So I like to un let's get an understanding that even in trials, and we're gonna um, we're gonna there's, there's various <laughs> there's various understandings of trials, right? So trials, and like I said, the tribulations. That's what we can go through, right? And 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 we can we can we're gonna be experiencing things and 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 life struggles here on Earth. But then there's also trial. Like I, I've been on. Have you ever been? Well, let me see. I've been in front of the judge many times, but I was a cop out artist. When I'm dead wrong, I'm dead. That's how I copped out to that ten. Only got eight. Yeah, because like you, what you said, you had what they show me all that. No, I ain't no need to go to trial because I don't like being in front of that judge anyway. So sometimes your struggles here are still getting heavenly judgment because there is trial. You are going to be on trial. I don't want to get too deep on that, but always understand that. And that's why one of the next sessions, the next sections, is very important because our actions are being judged. But there's only one true judge. After I did my time in, 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 in the fourth district, the eastern district, uh, uh, in, in, in the fourth district in the Commonwealth of, of, of Virginia, the judge that sentenced me back then, and he sentenced me, I got locked up in 2000, he sentenced me in 2001, January 18, 2001. His name was Honorable Raymond J. Jackson. Uh, Mr. Darren, you're going to be a... Uh, 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 um, they tried to give me 12 and a half to 15, end up taking a plea for uh, 121 months to 151. He gave me the 121. He said, Mr. Darren, I don't know if this, this plea for 10 years and one month, I calculated it real fast. It's going to do you any good uh, by, the, by your minister society. I'm not sure this was that. And he gave me a whole spiel. And I never forget, I'm sitting in front of him. And it took me a while to realize it. It wasn't the time that really hurt me. It was the fact I gave that man the power to say what I was and what I wasn't going to be. And, and, I, and my actions let him judge me. 
And now as I'm walking with faith, I hate that. I hate being judged by them. So one thing about being judged by someone on trial, you got to avoid, your actions have got to avoid you being on trial. I gave him the power because my actions dictate. So I wasn't just mad at him. I was really upset at myself. I was the culprit because I allowed him to have the position and it should be only one judge. So you got trials of life and then you got trials. So our earth struggles are still having heavenly judgment. Psalms chapter 25, verse 16. Psalms chapter 25, verse 16. 16 through 19. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from my anguish. Look on my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. See how numerous are my enemies and how fiercely they hate me. Does that have that or does that feel like a time in your life or even if it's now? When you are overwhelmed by those around you or the things within. Psalms chapter 71, verses 19 through 21. Your righteousness, God, reaches to the heavens. You who have done great things, who is like you, God? Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. You will increase my honor and comfort me once more. Trials and tribulations are still tied to the heavenly God. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 7 through 21. Apostle Paul says, I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, you got to understand where he came from walking out. God visited him when he was King Saul because he was a persecutor of the believers. And he came later, but he became so powerful. He's recognized and renowned for, uh, I believe, his writing 23 of the New Testaments. But it's not about his work. It's about his impact. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ. And to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, for which ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. According to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. For this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through the his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know that this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. 
See, the apostle Paul been through some things. When he's writing to the church in Ephesus, when he writes to the church in Philippi, when he writes to Corinth, he was going through seeing. He was one of the most uh, 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 um, consistently persecuted. After he did so much, <laughs> he got so much done. Now, he got locked up. He'd been in prison multiple times. He got a rap sheet. He done got stoned. He done got beat. He done got uh, 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 punished. He, was getting, he went through some stuff. But he was always, that's why he said, I, I don't be don't be discouraged about the sufferings I do for your behalf because he wasn't doing it for him for the Lord and his people trials and tribulation first Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 1 through 3 And go Paul again so when we could stand it no longer because they was going through something on the, on the island of Thessalonia we thought it best to be left by ourselves in Athens. We sent Timothy, who was our brother and co-worker in God's service, in spreading the gospel of Christ to strengthen and encourage you in your faith. He sent, that was a young man. That was his, his, that was his Elisha to Elijah. If he was Elijah, that's his Elisha. Everybody, when you are walking, it's not wrong with having a student that's going to take up the work that you're doing. Someone that's walking with you and that's ready to carry that work on and send them out. That is what, in business, you ain't supposed to be doing your own work all the time. You should be developing a team so people can do it in your space. Do it the way that you do it. Do the way that you like it, even when you ain't there. It's always should be building in a community in one unified Mindset or goal, right? So that no one will be unsettled by these trials. I'm going to send Timothy to strengthen and encourage you in your faith. So that no one will be unsettled by these trials. For you know quite well that we are destined for them. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that we will be persecuted. And it turned out that way, as you well know. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to you to find out about your faith. I was afraid in that some way the tempter. Ooh, did I, did, 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 let me make sure that I, I might have gave that to you a little early. Yes, amen. Let me, I almost, I almost gave it to you because we don't want to talk about him yet. We don't want to talk about him yet. Let's move on to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 26 to 31. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 26 through 31. If we deliberately keep on sinning, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and a raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. That's for people who followed the law. How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the son of God underfoot? Who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them and who has insulted the spirit of grace? For we know him who said, it is mine to avenge, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. The Lord will judge his people. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. The Lord will judge his people. Second Peter chapter 2. Starting with verse one. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who brought them, bringing swift destructions on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on his ungodly people but protected Noah, 
a preacher of righteousness and seven others, if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the depraved con conduct of the lawless, for that righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. This is especially true of those who follow the corrupt desire of the flesh and despise authority. Bold and arrogant, they are not afraid to heap abuse on celestial beings. Yet even angels, although they are stronger and more powerful, do not heap abuse on such beings when bringing judgment on them from the Lord. When the angels are bringing judgment from the Lord, they don't even call somebody out like that. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. We're going to talk in one second about calling somebody out like that. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. And the Lord was spoken and he says to the angel of the church in Ephesus, right? These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. Now, I'm not going to break down or get into the, the symbolic um, 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 connections of the representations of what you're hearing. I, I, I pray that you can hear the revelation that is giving of, about the judgment. I know your deeds, your hard work and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles, people sent, but are not. And have found them false. I know this. The Lord said, I know this. You have persevered and have endured hardship for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. See, this is the judger. This is the one who's up there looking. Because, and, and, and again, this is some, like someone like my fearful. You have to be fearful, mindful. Because although you're doing work in his name, you will be judged. And there are some things that you're going to be held against you. And he said, yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do not do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from this place. Oh, that's powerful. He said, I will remove your lampstand. The Lord was going to take his light back. And it's not just a light. It's a lampstand. It's a holder of the light. So he's going to Snatch it back. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolotians, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of Yah, of God. So trials and tribulations, although they are earth struggles, they have heavenly judgment. But this leads us to our next topic about trials and this is called the people's court trial by person or judging others see we have one judge and although that man mr raymond jackson judged me because he that was his appointed position a lot of times we are walking around every day with a black robe on or a white one representing god especially us as believers pointing out, and I've been a victim of it, pointing out some things that God won't like about someone. Although you can bring them up, you can talk to them, you cannot judge them. And judging also assesses a penalty. See, that's the difference between recognizing and building and correcting, but judging assesses a penalty. Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. 
First, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Take your own first. Luke chapter 6, verses 37 to 38. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Romans chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. You, therefore, have no excuse. You who pass judgment on someone else, for at whatever point you judge another, you are condemning yourself, because you who pass judgment do the same things. Now, we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you, a mere human being, pass judgment on them and yet do the same things, do you think you will escape God's judgment? Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, forbearance, which is patience, not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance? Not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance? But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, remember that tested part? Because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath, when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will pay each person according to what they have done. To those who, by persistence in doing good, seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and who will reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For God does not show favoritism. He is not a respecter of persons. His principles and precepts and his promises are all going to be what they be. Romans chapter 14, verse 13. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. Make up your mind. Make up our minds not to put any obstacle or stumbling block in the way of a brother or sister. So, trials and tribulations. We discussed the earth, uh, earth struggles and heaven's judgment, and um, we just got out of people's court, judging others. Judging others. So what are some of the desired outcomes for trials and tribulations? Because there are still some desired outcome for the trials and tribulations, and the word of God leads us to spiritual development, development of our spirit. The trials and tribulations that we go through, although we judge, are to develop our spirit. Luke chapter 22, verses 28 through 30. The Lord Jesus was speaking to his disciples. And he said, you are those who have stood by me in my trials. And I confer on you a kingdom, just as my father conferred one on me so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So those who stood on the trials with him, this is a part of the desired outcome. You get to that placement with him to become a judge with him over others. Now, if that's what you're looking for, an appointment like that, then let your motives 
seek that. But if you're looking just to have an intimacy with him and understanding, then that just be an outcome of yours. Acts chapter 14, verse 22, verse 22. Strengthening the disciples and encouraging, to, encouraging them to remain true to the faith, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they say. Strengthening the disciples, the followers, and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 8. We're talking about the desired outcomes for trials and tribulations. What if some were unfaithful? Would their unfaithfulness nullify God's faithfulness? Not at all. Let God be true and every human being a liar. As it is written, so that you may be proved right when you speak and prevail when you judge. But if our unrighteousness brings out God's righteousness more clearly, what shall we say? That God is unjust in bringing his wrath on us? I am using a human argument. This is what the Apostle Paul said. I am using a human argument. Certainly not. If that was so, how could God judge the world? Someone might argue if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? If the stuff I'm doing gives him more glory when he sees it, when it be corrected, why am I still considered a sinner? Why not say, as some slanderously claim that we say, let us do evil that good may result? Those who say that condemnation is just. What shall we conclude then, huh? Do we have any advantage? Do any of us who are looking to seek to do better, seek to improve on the word of God have any advantage? Not at all. For we have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under the power of sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways in the way of peace. They do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. There is no one good. But the word tells us in 5 verse 8, for God demonstrated his own love that yet while we were sinners, Christ died for us. That yet while we were sinners, although we're not good, that yet while we were sinners, we had a death and a resurrection go on for us. This is the only way we can even come to even want to even hear this. Recognizing something's amiss that's off that we do not like and want to either get rid of, not be like, or some things that is bothering, troubling us, some stuff we are experiencing that we need help with. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 32 to 39. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 32 to 39. Remember those early days after you had received the light, when you endured a great conflict full of suffering, after you received the light. So here are the words that after you get that light, it's not an easy walk. It's not a cakewalk. Following behind, there's a course, and there's other verses for that, but you can find that on your time. There's a course to following, Yeshua. There's a course to picking up your cross, and that is what the word says. Remember those early days after you have received the light, when you endured in a great conflict of suffering? Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times, you stood side by side with those who were so treated. 
You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. And by my righteous one will live by faith and I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. I take no pleasure in the one who goes backwards. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. We don't belong to them who are walking one on one day and going backwards. I pray we don't belong to them. But I expect that some will. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4 and verse 12. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4 and verse 12. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So understand that whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Verse 12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Are we getting some solace here? Are we getting some understanding of where we're walking and why we're walking and what we are going through? That these tests, trials, and tribulations are heavenly uh, or have heavenly origin and heavenly reason. First Peter chapter one, verses six through nine. In all this, you greatly rejoice. In all this, you greatly rejoice. Now, trust and believe I'm not here yet. But here, let's hear the word of God. In all this, you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trial. He says, all this, you rejoice. But for now, when you may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials, huh? These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, these trials, these tests have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes, even though refined by fire, even though that gold who went through the fire and got refined and came out more pure, your faith is worth more than that. So the test you go through and overcome it, that spiritual development is worth more than that. So don't lose yourself for the gold may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible, with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your soul. You're receiving it. We are receiving it now, the salvation of our soul. Although we'll have rewards in heaven, although we have other things coming, judgment, but rewards based on our action, our conduct, we have got the gift of salvation, the eternal life. Now we got to walk it out. So that was the desired outcomes for trials and tribulations based in spiritual development. So tests, trials, and tribulations, as we said, are heavenly originated, heavenly purposes. We're going to talk in, about temptations now. And although temptations, Romans 8, 28 says, for all things, all things. I love looking at those power words, all, everything, I am, them statements. For all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So even the temptation, this is, we're about to get some breakdown on this. So although the temptations are, are, are not particularly originated in heaven, they have heavenly purposes, and they also have some um, um, hellish out, um, um, outcomes. So you can find, how can I say it? 
temptations, and we're going to talk about it. The test of trials and tribulations, God given. But God is not the orchestrator of the temptations, amen? He is not the one behind the temptation. That's why I stopped a little bit earlier because he's mentioned about a tempter. There's someone called a tempter. That same one got attributes called an accuser. You know, in front of the, and when you go on trial, remember I said you're going to go on trial in front of the judge? You're going to have an accuser there, basically like a prosecutor. And that's one of his attributes. And that's that thief. You heard about him in John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We got the thief, the accuser, the adversary adversary and the tempter and these are attributes of our evil one the one we battle with but this is why i said it's still heavenly still heavenly tied there's still some connections but god is not the one doing it but he's delegated some things to be done to get the glory for it all how do we know this dog let's get inside the word that temptations are in god's work but trust he knows about them. temptations are in god's work but trust he knows about Let's go into Job. Remember we spoke about Job in chapter 23 when he was talking about hey, hey, what God was doing? This is Job chapter 1. So if you don't know anything about Job or you heard it, it's your first time, this is a good introduction. Not just to Job, but to, to the situation that Job has found himself in. Because sometimes you may find yourself in tests, find yourself in trials and tribulations, and then be looking like you did something wrong and don't even know. And that's, the, that's kind of the whole synopsis of Job. The story behind it. But let's start off in Job chapter 1. So let's get some good understanding here. In the land of Uz, ooh, Uz, I'm going to say Uz, right? There lived a man whose name was Job. And of course, um, it, it may be pronounced you. Like, because if the J wasn't there in, in, in Jesus, that was, and I didn't get sidebar, but I always had it. That's why God corrected me before. Um, when I couldn't accept Jesus for the J, right? I mean, uh, uh, they put his name on it. That's not what he was called. There was no J back then. And then when you found out his name was Yeshua, you know, Hamashiach, uh, 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 the, the, the risen savior, all that good intellectual Hebrew or Aramaic stuff. It, why don't we just, we got to call everything with a J. So it wouldn't be Jerusalem. It wouldn't be Jericho. It wouldn't be Joseph, which was called Yosef. It wouldn't be uh, uh, James. It'd be Yames. And so we, we need to, we need to, but let's just stay where we at, right? So, so whose name was Job? This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. He was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. Being a righteous man. This meets the criteria of righteousness. Amen. He had seven sons and three daughters, and he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 donkeys, and had a large number of servants. He was the greatest man among all the people of the East. His sons used to hold feasts in their homes on their birthdays, and they would invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them, family joint. When a period of feasting had run its course, Job would make arrangements for them to be purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom, interceding on behalf of his party and family. One day, let's pay attention, one day, the angels, sons of sons of sons, some, um, as the word says, sons of God, the angels came to present themselves before the Lord. The angels came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan, ooh, which is called at that time the adversary. So one day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. Let's, oh, this is where let's start the party off. We're talking about Job. But then one day the Lord was chilling somewhere. The angels came up on him and Satan came with him, this adversary of ours. The Lord said to Satan, he ain't said nothing to the angels. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, so they talking now, they communicating, understand this, they talking, they communicating. So when you be thinking about the stuff you going through and always blaming, first of all, giving so much credit to the enemy, everything you go through, every trial and tribulation, the enemy did this. No, separate tests, trials and tribulations and understand temptations. That is his job. That is him. When you desire something for the spirit, remember it's going to get tempted and something's going to come against it. That's his job to come against the things that you have God. 
But once you got the things in the flesh, he don't need to tempt you because he got you. But we ain't there yet. So they communicate. The Lord said the same. Where you come from? Same answer to the Lord. From roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant, Job? Imagine that. They said, Job, this, this righteous man, shunned evil, purifying his kids. He ain't mentioned nothing to say. Satan was never thinking about it. But the Lord said, have you, have you considered my servant, Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright. A man who fears God and shuns evil. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied. Have you not put a hedge around him in his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has and he will surely curse you to your face. So they over there kicking it about stuff that happened to Job. The Lord said to Satan, very well then. Everything he has is in your power, but on the man himself, do not lay a finger. Everything he has is in your power, but don't touch him. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. So they had a communication going, right? They was talking about this righteous person. So remember, although the temptations and the adversaries, the attacks are not God's base, because that's not what he's going to do, but he delegated that responsibility to somebody else. So we go to Job chapter two, because he got busy. You got to go into the own word. He got busy on, on, on Job. He was taking kids and doing, killing kids. I knocked off the 10, the cattle, everything he was talking about was knocking them off. He got, he got busy. It was more than trials and tribulation. It was death. So now we're going to jump to Job chapter two. On another day, the scripture starts over verse one. On another day. So this was another day. The angels came to Brent, the sons of God, came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came with them to present himself before him. And the Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? And what gets me before we go on, it's the second day that it happened. Obviously, the, the, the adversary know where the meeting point is. Obviously, they know where to meet up. They know what park to get together at. He know where he going to meet with them, and he met them at the same time. So he got to be inclusive on the plans. Get me right? Satan answered the Lord from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There was no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And he still maintains his integrity. Though you incited me, this is what God said, though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. Skin for skin, Satan replied. A man will give all he has for his own life. But now stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones, and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well then, very well. He said that's smooth too, very well then. He is in your hands, but you must spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the crowns of his head. So some things, again, that come on us, we coming from the enemy. But we also got to go to God if we want to understand why it's there. So that's just some introductory on who our adversary is. And again, like we said, temptations are in God's work, but trust he knows about. It. Matthew chapter six, verse 13. Matthew chapter 6, verse 13. And lead us not into temptation. Well, 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 let me go to verse 9 so we can not so we can add. This is the Lord's prayer and how uh, the Lord Jesus, how Yeshua has asked his disciples to pray. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts. So we also have forgiving our debtors. Forgive us our sins. As, uh, so we forgive those who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. That's the one who's controlling the temptation. Let's move on. 
Mark chapter 14, verses 37 to 38. Jesus was praying, and this is before his uh, his death was looming, and he just got finished praying to his father. His disciples were, were with him, and he left like two or three times, and every time he left, came back to, from praying, they were asleep. So like, this is the third time he, he went to pray, and he was talking about his father taking the cup. So when he came back, it says, he then returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? So he went away to pray for an hour. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He says, watch and pray. Stay alert. Not just watch around you. Stay alert to your, who you are, what you got going on, to what your flesh is saying. He said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We don't just got to observe. We got to pray. Luke chapter four verses one through thirteen. This is this this is this this is some power here. This is some power here because it ain't just us. Is why I like to like to like to admit. Well, some of those persons I like to admit to say I'm following my Lord. Not just he intimately showed himself, but he done he done expressed himself and had to face the things we do based on the word. Of course, he had to face those things that we do because we can't we can't say he's not an exclusive inclusive God. We can't say that he doesn't be a part of what we went through. The word tells us that he's faced the same thing but did not sin. But we're not there yet. Luke chapter Luke chapter four verses one through thirteen. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, start that off. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan, the river, and was led by the Spirit. Full of the Holy Spirit, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Where for 40 days he was tempted. He was led by the Spirit. He was first, he, he went there full. Let's pay attention. He was full. You got to first get full before you go into the wilderness. You got to make sure that that body is good. That spirit is all cool up. So before you go in there in that wilderness to be tempted, you got to be full. Where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, fasted. And at the end of them, he was hungry. The devil said to him, so man, remember he did. So in Job, the adversary was talking to Yahweh. And over here in Luke, the adversary is talking to Yeshua. And then in 2024, he'd be talking to us. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Remember, he hungry, he fasted. If you're the son of God, tell the stone to become bread. Jesus said, answer, it is written, man shall not live off of bread alone. He was quoting Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. He was using the word. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all the authority and splendor. It has been given to me. Woo, it has been given to me by Hudo. Huh? But let's keep going. It has been given. He said, I mean, I'm going to show you all this. I'm going to get this all to you. It has been given to me. And I can give it to anyone I want. If you worship me, it will be all yours. Jesus replied, it is written. You see, it's the second time he said, it is written. So when the devil was on you and tempting, after you praying, you fool, what you got to do? You got to come back with the word because Jesus came back with the word. It is written. He didn't start speaking what he thought. He said, it is written because there's always a word for the temptation. It is written. Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. He quoted Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13. The devil led him to Jerusalem. So first he had him here, led him here. Then he took him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. On the temple of God. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from there. For it is written. Ooh. He done shot the word back to the devil. Now the devil done shot the word to him. He done said, for it is written. So understand your adversary knows the word of God. He also knows who your God is. Remember, they were talking. So he said, the devil said, for it is written. 
He will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. The devil was quoting Psalms 91, chapter, Psalm 91, verse 11. He used the word against the word. How much more against us? That's why sometimes the voice and the emissary, you got to be careful that he's trying to use the word against you. Know what the desired voice is trying to get from you. Just because somebody's coming speaking the word don't mean that it's God speaking. Especially when it's not temptation. You got to know what it makes you feel or what it wants from you. What's the desired outcome? For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Quote in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16. So he quoted Deuteronomy chapter 8. And he quoted Deuteronomy chapter 6, two different versions. So with the word, he's getting right back to the word. Now this is the part I love. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Left him until an opportune time. So after he finished that round of tempting, and the other versions in Mark when he talked about it, said that his, he was depleted when after Jesus had that battle with him, he was depleted that the, that the angels had to come and refresh him. So he started off with a full spirit, but that temptation in the wilderness took a lot out of him. That's why you got to be strong in the spirit before you go to the wilderness, because if you ain't going in the spirit, he's going to eat you up, especially when you're throwing a word at you. The devil had finished all this tempting. He left him to an opportune time. So if you defeat the enemy today on the word of God, do not be surprised when he come back tomorrow. That's his job. That's what he was giving the responsibility to do for a time period. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 4 through 5. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you, see, this is where I almost ruined it earlier, remember? In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that we will be persecuted. And it turned out that way, as you well know. For this reason, when I can stand it no longer, I sent to, 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 I sent to find out about your faith. I was afraid that in some way the tempter had tempted you and that our labors might have been in vain. Apostle Paul said, I just seem to find out about how y'all are doing because I'm afraid that the tempter had tempted you and all the stuff we poured into on Wednesday since last year and all the time you coming, it was been done in vain because this ain't just for a Wednesday study. It is for you to grow, for us to grow and not let the enemy come and snatch it away. So you can get on a Wednesday and he's going to snatch you away on a Thursday. You could be top ticking on a Friday and you over here chilling with the women and now on Wednesday. See, that's the thing about it. If you find me, you're going to find my flaws on a Wednesday and you'll find one. They might be there on a Friday because he's working with me, but I won't develop some new ones on a Thursday and I ain't going to get past on a Sunday. That's not the walk that I'm on. So despite my falling down, despite some of my indiscretions, despite some of my transparent uh, 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 fleshlessness, you're not going to see nothing new developing because I'm not going to be one way and be another. That's not what the light does. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 10 through 18. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. Amen. That is why we got to understand that intimacy. Most times we call, well, again, Lord God and who it is. And Lord Jesus, that's the title. But Jesus is not our father. That's our big brother. 
He calls Abba. He calls upon Abba to the Lord Yahweh. He understands him. He is a different personification of the Most High God. He is the Word and is the Word. The Word says that in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters in the assembly. I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here I am and the children of God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity. Since us, the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in our humanity. So that by his death, he might break the power of him who holds the power over death. Who is that? That is the devil who holds it over our head, these actions, these sinfulness. And free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. And freed us, gave us liberation. All our lives we've been held accountable for the sinful nastiness of us. But now we can walk and be free because we don't got to just die in a grave. We don't got to be condemned or judged to a prison. We don't got to be walking in a spiritual imprisonment. We can get the key, touch the key of Jesus, get up out of this gate. And the worst part about getting out the gate is walking right back in because we are our own worst recidivism rate. And free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. It's not the angels, but Abraham's descendants, those who are um, um, coming under the child of faith, right? For this reason, he had to be made like them. For this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted. He himself suffered when he was tempted. He is able to help those who are being tempted. Don't we all need some help? Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who was unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. In our time of need, which is barely. James chapter 1, verses 13 to 14. I'm going to say 13 to 15, shout out. Uh, just in memory, uh, I see my cousin now of his pops, um, my Uncle Lee. You know what I'm saying? Um, my, my pops, right hand man, but he also married my my aunt, now mom, right? My cousin mom. But I had, yeah, I grew up under my pops and them. But I had my relationship with my Uncle Lee was uh, unique. Like from a little boy, I used when I was little when I seen him dead in my aunt. I used to change, he'd be a big dude, six, only six, six, two, six, three, two forty. You know what I mean? Clean. And 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 cause of now, you know how I'm gonna give it up. So I don't got no cut card. Clean. So I used to be young and run up on me, chase these chase. I used to call him Aunt Lee. Oh, Aunt Lee, Aunt Lee used to chase me, hated it, but he's cool. I mean, smooth, big dude, driving my pot. It was cool. Then I got into the streets, you know what I'm saying? Around 14, started hustling. My pops always tried to beat it out of me, get out of me. And as I got in the streets more, my uncle noticed it. I didn't notice more than he, he was in the street. So he he used to try to give me a game, took me uptown, you know what I mean? Doing it. And then later on in the game, he was in the game, but he fell victim to the game. And I seen that part of him. 
So I'm out in the streets growing up. This is the one I call Aunt Lee. Now he's watching. My name was solid. My name is, is solid. And at that time, I'm about my business. So, but they knew. But I had to watch my uncle become a victim of the game. And then after that, years later, I went to prison, came home, and came back. You know, before he before he um transitioned out of here, um I, I I seen him like I always had that love. We always had that relationship. But I never forget when I came home from prison in 08. I went down to Florida and seen him. That's when I see my cousin now, like the first time really. I think. And even growing up, you know, I mean, I'm coming home working out. He little guy now, now he big. We working, I had him working out, but his pops, Dick and me and his pops had a good relationship. But he was struggling up and down, something like a DMX thing, something like a doc thing, not to a degree. But he was up and down. So that's why sometimes it hurt when you see somebody who can know the word but still can fall. X knew the word. My uncle knew it, but he, I didn't know he knew as much of it because he was also had some pastoral things. I seen him doing some stuff, but I seen his flesh. And I never forget he was struggling. And he gave me this verse because this verse he planted in my heart. It wasn't in there. He planted this verse in my heart. And I'm like, yo, the reason why it stuck in me because he wasn't living by it. Sometimes you get the strongest seed planted by somebody who ain't going to hold up to it. But I wanted to be like it. And the word said, he said, yo, D, yo, I'm telling you, man, yo, God, God don't be tempting people, man. That's not what he do. He said, God ain't a tempter of man. Man is led away by the temptations of his own heart. Only thing he be feeling the lust and stuff in there. And that's James 1, 13 and 14. That's what the word says. I'm just saying it the way Uncle Lee said it. God is not. Let's get to the Bible. Let's get back to it. I, 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 shout out to Uncle. Shout out now, man. You know, bless him, man, to the life of Uncle Lee. James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempted me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. When tempted, no one should say God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But remember, we're speaking about this because who did he delegate the responsibility of temptation to? Dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. So we just talked about the temptations that aren't God's work, but trust he knows about them. And we're going to close out with the desired outcome of temptation. See, we had talked about the desired outcome for tests. We talked about the desired outcomes for trials and tribulations. Now we got to look at the desired outcome of temptation because the first two are, 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 are brought upon us to bring something for us. But when we fall under temptation, something will come on us. Sin and death. The desired outcomes of temptations are sin and death. And since we're sitting right there, James, I'm going to go there. We're going to at verse 15. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. See, that's the other verse that my uncle didn't share with me. Not saying it would have mattered. Maybe not, or maybe would have, but he told me about me. He said the temptations around me, they were on me. That's inside of me, but he didn't tell me the process, what happens. He said, after that desire has conceived, that temptation, that seed of thought, because this is the process to it. Because remember, when God, when something happens, we can be doing good right now. You're going to get a thought or a nug. Something happened before, before anything happened, you're going to get some nugging at you, trying to come against the word, something that you are secretly pushing away, whether it's a, a drug habit, whether it's a woman, a man, whether it's a lust, whatever it is, it's sneakily, you already know it's coming in your head. It's coming in your heart because you got rid of it. You're trying to get away from it. And that thing is nagging at you. And then once you once you send that pay, give it a little bit of attention. You don't rebuke. You don't rebind. You don't resist. You don't push out. You don't give the word. You start tolerating, start allowing. Once that thing is there, that desire has conceived because now it's being birthed. It gives birth to sin. Sin is in the thoughts. Sin is in the separation. We're going to talk about that one second. I have a verse for that. But it's in that thoughts now. That sin is now what you are planning on. You are you are giving it credit, credibility. You are giving it thought. You are considering it. And while you are doing this, the world around you has already allowed. Remember, the tempter is already on it. So when the tempter has already seen you biting, he already got something laid out. As soon as he feels you biting and they rebuke him, he, you're going to get a text. You're going to get a phone call. You're going to get an a urge. You're going to get somebody to, to... Let me tell you something. When I came over from prison, again, oh, wait, and I was in Charlotte, right? 
had five years supervised release. I couldn't smoke weed. I always rather to smoke. And and again, at, I been, I fell victim to pills, uh, alcoholism. I smoked dust when I was younger. The reason why I even changed with smoking is because my truth of it is, and I know we can do all things to him to strengthen me, is at times, and I don't blame it on my thyroid or nothing that, I just being real with you, I have emotional instabilities at times and some mental imbalances. As much as I want to be better, as much intelligent as I can be, um, and some of it is my thyroid, it regulates emotional. And I also have four sisters. I'm very sensitive. I also got traumas and abandonments. And this, so I'll be up and down all around. And, and, and when I smoke, it, it never disconnected me from God. This is my truth. And never put me a burden on it. I, I cost money, yes. But it also kept me some peace and sanity to hold on. And I can hear from God. But when I was on papers, I was looking to try to cope with that madness. And I was drinking because you can drink on paper, but you couldn't get too crazy. I caught a DV in 2012. Glory to God, I should have more. We ain't going to talk about what I did. But I also realized that while I was home, I always was drinking. And then I also had a lot of women. This was my womanizing stage. So I can't, before I went to prison, I had two children. After children, I had more, two more daughters, but I also have two sons through my ex-wife and I've been raising since they were for the last 15 years, right? Um, I'm so thankful for them. But I had women. They were coming. I was, and I ain't going to hold you. They was, you know what I'm saying? I got me. They were, they were there. I was out there running through shot. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I played no game. They, they had no, no cut card, no demographics. We touching all bases, old, young, white, black. I bought it. I mean, promotion. And I, it took me a whole couple of years to understand. I was fighting. I always had my eyes like, you're bad, God. You blessing me. That's my work. I'm looking for God, too. Going to work. I'm looking for God. I got it. I'm looking for him. But God, you taking care of me. Some men can only get one. I know. I make some people say I'm not the most handsome, but I know I do my Dang, God, no, this is a little bit more than even my thing. Man, can I, I'm going to give some, let me share some. I don't want to share them. But this is my talk because I'm thinking that God was blessing me. And then I, it took me so long in the spirit that had nothing to do with God bless me. I was up under the illusion. The devil had delivered me into the alcoholism, which fed the women because I couldn't do nothing with the women without the drink. Because when I didn't drink, my spirit and God's spirit that was in me didn't even want to be with them. I'm like, yo, I'm caught up in this whole roller coaster that needed one to feed the other. And I said it was God blessing me and with the devil tricking me because the temptation was a monster because he knew the ministry and the work to be coming. So he tried to get to the purpose first. So he attacked, he attacked my spiritual desire with, with my earthly temptations. That is why we got the word says, be alert and of sober mind for your enemy. The devil walks around like a roaring lion seeking to which he can devour. He's been doing it to the days of Job and he's doing it now. Romans chapter six, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of life is eternal. But but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For the wages of sin is death. James 1, um, 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 14 just told us that. After, after, after desire is conceived, it gives birth to death. And, and, and then from death, it, it grows to um, from sin and then grows to death. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And remember that death, because sometimes it ain't, it's not leaving the breath out of you. It's the separation between you and the most high. He cannot stand to live in that. He can be forgiven. He can be repentant. He can be with you. I, I try to keep him in everything. I try in everything I'm doing. I'm talking about the things that's coming against my head, the things I ain't going to talk to y'all about. I'm talking about the hidden things in my heart. Not like I'm out here wilding. I'm talking about things that are still chasing me since I was 12. I'm talking about the voice that was still coming, the habits that came on me since I was 14. I'm talking about things that are still, oh, oh, oh you. You, you, you want to get that up? You doing what you giving that up for? Man, come on, man. You know how we do it. Boy, you know you wild. Sticky. Hey, ain't nobody call me that. You, stop. Hey, you, 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 you feel me? Because the temptations is always going to try to attack the desires, the spiritual desires. And when they're not being attacked, that means you're underneath them. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 to 13. You're ready to close out shortly, brothers and sisters. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 to 13. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. 
No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So he's not a tempter of man. You, you're tempted when you're led away by the enticements out of your heart. But when you are tempted, that's why he says that, uh, although they're not God's work, but he knows of them. He's watching. He's waiting. He got a way out. You got to hear the voice. You got to choose him over everything else. I don't care if it was the whatever it means. You got to choose him because he's right there. And you can't blame him and say he's not. His word don't return void. Let's close out with 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. Let's start, since we're going to close out, let's go start at 6, please. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 through 10. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we could take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money, this is what we all can probably quote, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, but pay more attention to the closing. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith. You had to be somewhere to go somewhere away from it. So this can be us tonight. Have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. That's temptations, sin and death. Brothers and sisters, thank you for tonight's session. Thank you for the wisdom that God has provided. As always, thank you for the attendance and the ears there and the hearts that are seeking to be received. I pray over each one of you, each one of you brothers and sisters that are seeking the Lord tonight. I ask that we all can be changed and transformed as Romans 12, uh, um, 1 and 2 tells us, you know, to offer our bodies as a... Um, uh, of the living sacrifice as um and that's our pr true and proper worship and more importantly do not be conformed to the patterns of this world but be transformed by the renewing of our mind then we'll be able to test god's will his good pleasing and perfect will then we will be able to test we can become testers after we're transformed so let's close out in prayer O oh, Yahweh El Shaddai, most high, great I am. You are the creator of all things. You are Elohim. You are El. You are the most beloved. You are the one who is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. It is only because of your word spoken that the world is. It is only because of your word given that we have an example. It is only because of the breath of life that you have placed inside of us that when we are seeking, that we have this opportunity to overcome death, physical, literal, figurative, and symbolic, that we can just surrender ourselves today, Father, by accepting you. Father God, I know that we all possess a sinful nature, but lo and behold, we are not condemned but could walk in conviction because what man or what woman of God has not had to battle with the sinful nature of this flesh bag. We ask that your vessel, that your spirit will be all that we seek to trump over us, to be a, a, a precedence over, over the guiltiness of our old lives, over the condemning ways of our old thoughts. We pray that you will continuously test our heart and our mind, that you allow the trials and tribulations of life struggles here on earth will develop into our understanding of heaven's judgment and also pray to not judge each other for we do not possess that's that spiritual capability or responsibility. Father God, I pray that you deliver us from the hands of the evil one who you have delegated to allow to do such things. And Father, I pray that your will be done, but also strengthen each one of us with the tools, the tactics, and the access to your word. That is why we store your word up in our heart for even if we cannot get to it physically, we can pull from the depths of your living water stored inside of us to resist and rebuke the enemy, just as your example 
and your son Jesus did. So, Father God, I pray that over each one with traveling and mercies, pray over the homes of those of the saints who are believing and pray for the purposes of the ministry to be developed based on the seeds planted and those are watered and the crops that will be cultivated. In the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, I may say amen, amen, amen. 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 Peace, bro. Beautiful Amen. work. Appreciate you it. Good night. You ain't, you ain't know what oh, it is. That was a good word, cousin. Good word, man. I'm out here. I'm out here on the football field li listening to this, man. Some good word. Yeah, you know, man. Around, let, let them let run, tell them to run a route with the like word. <laughs> they tune it in. They're like, yo, who's that? Who's that? You know, yeah, they're going to hop on this one. Yeah, yeah, you know what it is. Let them, not only, not only do that, man. Let the light shine. Don't, don't. Yeah, I'm cold. All right. Love, bro. Love, cousin. You're going to see that video. That'll be a wide open. Uh, peace, love. Cuzzo, I see y'all. Peace and love. Bless night, everybody. Yeah, we know it. Cuzzo, Kishon, Dante, I see you, brother Reek. Peace, bro. Good word. Blessings, yeah. man. Much love, man. 86 Fade. All right. Yes, sir. Stay blessed, bro. I'm ready. As always, peace and love. i see y'all. See you, Chachi. I'll talk to you later. Hey. Oh, I'm trying to learn this new stop and record. Let me see. Oh, 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 yeah, there you go. Uh -huh.